Hello and welcome to Fixed Tech Stuff. It's been a while, I've got numerous videos and ideas planned, but a busy life, parts orders, lost motivation, health problems including ADHD prevents me from churning them out as regularly as I or the YouTube algorithm would like. Now if something of yours breaks, you throw it away and think paying one or two thousand dollars for a new one is perfectly normal, then this video might not be for you. I like to get discarded 10, 20, 25 dollar bicycles from the recycling centre and fix them properly and as cheaply as possible. Here's one I did recently, a five dollar broken bicycle I stripped, painted and fully rebuilt for my son with a total price of $120, not including labour, or about the same price as a new one. It's built how he wanted, with custom gearing for hilly terrain, but either way it exposes what is wrong with this world. People have money, but not the time to do great things like work on these projects with their children. In today's video we'll be going over a bicycle bearing mod I figured out. I obtained a 26 inch alloy rim with a Shimano hub that had a destroyed bearing cup. Now you can purchase these forged bearing cups from AliExpress. I assume it would be quite a task replacing it, as it was difficult to remove. But why not upgrade it to a modern seal bearing instead? Oddly, the cup I removed was the exact same size as the bearing, but the bearing will simply not press in. Here's the cup on the brake disc side, and here's the one I already removed. As you can see, it's not going in without a fight. First we'll remove the remaining cup. We can hit it out from the back using this bolt and a hammer. That took quite a few swings off camera, but as you can see the cup isn't damaged at all. Something tells me the other one was damaged with a hydraulic press. Now I ordered front and rear axle shafts complete with bearings for 15 Australian dollars. So let's assemble everything and see if we can press both bearings into the hub. Well I tightened it as hard as I could and this is the result. It's crooked. Not only that, I think I damaged one of the bearings. You can't go about putting force on the centre part of bearings, that's just asking for trouble. For those that are wondering, I did try freezing the bearing and heating the hub, which also didn't work. The next day. Well, I slept on it. Yesterday I scrolled AliExpress looking for options. I don't own a lathe or a milling machine, so some kind of reamer would be the perfect tool. A router bit, if it was the exact size needed. An adjustable milling tool would certainly do the job. But the cost would be more than a new hub. Contemplating an adjustable reaming tool, instead I came up with a simpler solution that will cost under one dollar. A honing tool, but not quite like that. Let's design and 3D print it. Our target diameter is 25mm but we'll need to allow 0.5mm for sandpaper, so we'll go 245 Next we'll need a slot to hold the sandpaper, 2mm wide should do. I want to be able to connect it to a drill to save time, so let's make a 19mm nut to drive it. Polygon tool and some maths. Then we'll put it on there and merge it all together. Import that into Cura and slice it. I'm using PET, 
have a 0.5 millimeter nozzle and went 0.5 layers with no cooling or supports. And here it is. Surprisingly, it came out just right the first time. I've only got painter's sandpaper on hand, so we'll try that. Cloth backed emery paper would have been better. I think this is 240 grit. You could do it by hand, but it'll take all day. Instead, we'll use a drill or a half inch impact driver with a 19 millimeter socket. Here you can see I flipped the sandpaper over when it was worn out. This is just for the video, but most of the work off camera I held the wheel vertically where I could better gauge the angle. No, not quite, it'll need a bit more. The friction generates heat so the bearing fits in easily due to expansion. And of course we repeat the process for the other side. I've given it a thorough clean, now it's time for reassembly. It's a perfect interference fit, so no real need for Loctite or a hammer. This 3D printed drift helps me push it in place. I tightened up the lock nuts, now for the brake disc. I tightened that up with a cassette removal tool. And there we have it. If you found this informative or educational, make sure to like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.